Good morning. Is everybody awake? At least you're at least you're being honest. That's good. Um, before we get started, I want to just tell you a couple things. Um, this is a, usually have a ministry minute somewhere in the service, and right now it's going to happen because it's mine and I feel like talking. Um, <laughs> well, th- thank you, Paula. <laughs> Woo! Um, we're starting a new series. It's called We Are FOF, and uh, what it is is we go through. We like to go through every year and kind of talk about the core values. Uh, of, of our church, kind of what makes FOF, FOF, um, what, what, what God has put on our church's heart to, to shine his light in our community. So um, we're going to talk about that for the next, uh, next few weeks. Um, but also this, this month we have a fifth Sunday, and if you know what fifth Sunday is, what, what, if you know what fifth Sunday means, give me a yell. Okay. All right. Fifth Sunday is Celebration Sunday. We always have, we, we extend worship time. We have baptism, communion. Uh, we, we like to do the a family communion together. But if you are interested in being baptized, uh, we'd like you to get, get in touch with uh, Pastor Jamie. Uh, just send him a message on Facebook, a text, call him. He still actually answers the phone sometimes. Um, but we'd like to, we, we, we love to be able to share in that time with anybody who, who wants to, to be baptized to make that step uh, in, the, in their walk with, with Jesus. So. Uh, like I said, get in touch with us, uh, but come out for that one. That's always a good one, too, to, to bring people who maybe don't come to church regular on a regular basis because we, we like to just have fun with that one. You never quite know what's going to happen on a Celebration Sunday. So um, if you're excited about Celebration Sunday, give me another scream. Woo! <laughs> Paula. This is all we got. <laughs> she claps more than before, and then she's. <laughs> Go ahead, stand up, and greet someone around you this morning. I'll be ready to worship this morning. Sing this out. Christ is the cornerstone of our church. Should be the cornerstone of our lives. Amen. My hope is built. Hope is built. blood and righteousness I 
dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. Sing that again. My hope is built. My hope is built. Exalt your name. Jesus, you are the Savior. You're the one. Cornerstone. Cornerstone of our lives. Cornerstone of our church. Christ alone.
created you mold our hearts together there's no one higher than you redeemer defender our great and mighty savior there's no one higher than you you are always with us you are always with us gracious to forgive us by your power we've been set free and lord we stand amazed in your presence astounded by your mercy and love our hands are lifted high in surrender your grace for me Majestic in wonder, you reign in love forever. There's no one higher than you. Your beauty, your splendor, your glory knows no measure. There's no one higher than you. You are always with us.
Amen. Again, Father, I just come to you now. Thank you already for meeting us here. As we declare again in one voice, we just we worship the one true God. true God. And I know this is something I mention a lot of times during prayer, but it's just, it's just astounding to think your majesty, the king of the universe, desires to meet with us, desires to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with each one of us. of our life. We can build our lives on Him. The firm foundation. Just sing this a couple more times. Just again declaring to you, Lord. It's okay to give another hand. <laughs> you can have a seat right now. We're going to continue with worship. We're going to attitude of worship with our giving, so if our ushers will go ahead and get in place. We just ask that you bless this giving, Lord. Bless that it's used for your will your will alone. Just remembering in this in this new series, again, as, as we are FOF, we are not just, we are not giving to a building, we're not giving to an organization, we are giving what you've given to us, Lord. We are just giving back just a portion of everything you've blessed us with. So first we say thank you for our lives. Thank you for each blessing every day. We just give it back to you now.
chose to make himself known and show us the way back to him speaking wisdom and truth into the hearts of peasants and kings he began to obey a word that would change the course of all things Sites and Katie are here this morning. They had a they had a baby a few weeks ago, so trying to get yeah, it's great. She's she's here or he's here somewhere, and there he is. I know Aaron's back there, Sue. I was talking about the baby. Um, uh, <laughs> do what? Yeah. Um, 
It's great to have you this morning. We uh, welcome you to, uh, to Fellowship of Faith. Uh, I saw some people coming in this morning who um, maybe aren't regulars or maybe haven't been here uh, at Fellowship of Faith before. Maybe it's been a while since you were here. Um, I don't normally do this right before I speak, but um, you'll, you should find a yellow card in the back of uh, the back of the seat. If you will take that and fill it out, um, and just there's a connection center in the back. I think Kathy Whaley's still sitting back there. She is. Um, you can, if you hand this, put this in the connection box back there. She'll give you a gift, welcome you uh, to Fellowship of Faith, and give you some other other in- information. So, uh, if you would just do that. Um, so it's that time of year again. It's August. Uh, it's time for us to do our uh, our series that's based on the core values of the things that we believe are foundational to the way we are supposed to do things here at Fellowship of Faith. Um, we're going to do this over the next eight weeks. Uh, we're going to be t- discussing a lot of different things. Uh, one of the things I want you to um, to just be aware of, as, as we have gone through this entire year, and it started a little bit earlier uh, in the fall of last year, um, we have been in the process of revising and reviewing and looking at all the ways that God has, has defined us as a church, us as individuals, uh, us as a community, and we are continuing to do that. And so this is technically, we've done the We Are FOF before, uh, this is the revised edition, I'll say. And so over the next uh, couple uh, months, we are going to be looking at those core values that we talked about, but we may be looking at them in a little bit different way. We may be redefining them, honestly, um, that I'm going to be proposing in the in the message and with the vision team as we go, that we eliminate a few of them, replace them with other things that as we have dealt with with what God is, is showing us, as we have looked at the way God is leading us as a church, um, that maybe there are some other things that need to be part of the foundational elements. So we're going to be talking about that. I just want to let you know up front, but I'll, I'll be honest. Anytime we start talking about a core value series, I get a little bit, um, there's a little bit of trepidation. Because in the last few years, um, over the last nine, ten years um, that I've been here, because we're actually closing in on 11 now, uh, that Fellowship of Faith has has been a church, um, we have had very, I have had various responses when we start talking about core values. Um, And because of that, I, and Craig will acknowledge that it happened when he he was on staff, Uh, Pastor Greg would acknowledge when uh, when he was here, And Steve uh, has been involved in those conversations too. Because of negative feedback, because of perceived uh, concerns about what people were going to say, we tried to cram the core values into as small a time as possible so we would irritate the fewest number of people. Is, Is that accurate, Craig? Okay. And... What has happened over this last year, and, over, and especially as we've discussed this, because we were going to do it again, we were going to do four weeks, and as I looked and I looked, I, I was, as God was working through me, as he was working through our worship design team, as I was reflecting on conversations I've had with vision team and with the leaders throughout this year, I thought, this is not a time for us to blow past what we believe God wants us to do as a church. It is not a time to just try to irritate as few people as possible and and do something you know that's kind of a throwaway series and i think craig would also verify this that in in our experience um we have sometimes viewed it that way but the truth is if we truly believe that god has called us to be a church and be, called us to be here in this time, and he has called you to be here and be part of it, we all need to know what we have decided to be, of what the thing of which we have decided to be a part. Now, throughout the next eight weeks, we're going to be looking at Scripture. I'm not just going to stand up here and tell you all the cool things I think we should do. Foundational element to this. One of the ones that's been there since the beginning is the idea of biblical authority. We're going to talk about that in a few weeks, but we can't get away from that. And as we've done, and that's part of of 
one, one of the reasons I feel like it is so important to expand this from four weeks to eight weeks. Because I believe that we need to get down to the root. We have to understand why God has called us to do the things God has called us to do. And, and honestly, the bottom line in, in life is that sometimes, even if you have very established things, if you have very, idea, you have very specific ideas of well, how things should be done, it's very important to review those and sometimes revise them. Because a lot of times, the ideas we had 10, 11, 12 years ago are not necessarily ideas that God has for us today. So that's what I had to work on. That's what I, that was mine. Now, I know as a church, we, we have that. There are probably some of you in this room that this is the 11th time you have experienced the Core Value Series. And for some of you, it may be the second or third time or the first time. But for those of you who have heard it multiple times, some of you have already planned to extend your summer to October. I remember the third year of the church. I, was, I, was, I, start, I started coming the, the, the second year of the church. The third year, there was a young lady who came to our church, um, and we did the core value series. And she had been coming for maybe a little bit longer than I had. This probably may have been the third time that we did the core value series. And she, I, she said it to me. So I know this was not hearsay. This was not third. Why are we doing this again? I already know those things. Now, what I refrain from saying is, um, are you ex- exercising all of those in your life? I fail. I, what I also, but my, my more diplomatic response was, but there are people who haven't been through this three times. And if we're talking about the authority of Scripture, does that ever, do we ever get tired of hearing that that's the foundational element of our faith? And so if you have that mentality, even a little bit, maybe you were involved in the development of the seven core values. And so you say, I I know them, I helped write them. I want to encourage you, be here, And see what God has for our church. We have to internalize these things. If they are the core, they must be internalized. If they are what we build or or what we on what we are building our entire church, the people of the church should know those things. Now we're going to be talking about fellowship of faith a lot now that's the one of the other things that scared us about this i have actually had people leave the church after a core value series we have and their response was there was more talk about being part of the church than being part of the family of god even at that point at that point it was you know probably four or five years in the church that's never been the case it never will be the case And through this series, you will see that the foundational elements of fellowship of faith are the foundational elements of faith in general. They go back, they they don't just apply to how we live our lives in community, they they apply to how we live our lives daily away from here. That's why the founding members who came up with these and who worked with them with Pastor Greg agreed that these were the ones that needed to be there. As I said, there are some that we're going to be discussing and revisiting over these next two months. Uh, Some that we have maybe thought were really good ideas but have never executed well. And so we have to re-examine. Does that need to be a core value or does it need to be something we shoot for? But is there something else that fits better? And we're going to talk about all of that over the next two months. It's going to be an exciting month. It's going to be a challenging month. But this is not a throwaway series. It's in important for us to know these things and to execute and do the best we can to be the kind of church God wants us to be. Now, we're talking about core values, but I want to start this morning talking a little bit about mission. Now, I also, when I discussed the fact that we were having a core value series, um, had one response from someone very close to me who said, didn't you just do that? And I said, yeah, a year ago. I realized in September and Octo- or in October and November and December, we spent a lot of times reexamining 
who we were as a church and who we are as Christians and all those types of things. And I, I get that. But the core value series was actually in July or something. I don't remember exactly, but it's been a year. So I realized we've discussed mission a lot. We've discussed these things a lot. And, and maybe um, we have a short-term memory a lot of times of what happened in the process. We, we hear something and we go, oh, we did that. We just did that. And then we start looking at it and go, oh, well, no, we didn't. Jamie's preached nine series since then or 10 series since then. But in our head, we have a tendency to go, oh, that just happened last week. So my my request to you before we get started is, A, keep your mind open, keep your heart open. Let God see what he, what he wants to do in your life through this series. And, and B, um, if you have questions, if you have issues, if there's anything that you you want to know about that, Come to me, find somebody on, on, in leadership or on the vision team or ask somebody at the Connection Center, and if they can't answer the question, they will write it down, they will stick it in that box, and I'll get back to you. But we're talking about mission, and we have talked about our mission statement quite a bit. So someone, anyone, tell me the mission statement of Fellowship of Faith. Oh, good. Zach got it. And I heard it over here, too. Transforming lives and serving Jesus Christ. Now, our mission statement, you guys know what mission statements do, right? They express your purpose, right? Why you exist. Usually it's as organization, but for in our church, it's what God, what we feel God has called us to do. And through that, that developed um, through meeting after meeting. I'm sure I was not part of them, but I'm sure that they were very exciting meetings at first that got very tedious toward the end. Because if you do business stuff and you start explaining, you start describing um, all the cool stuff that's happening, but eventually you're just like, we've got to make some decisions and make this happen. But there was excitement, there was development, and I know because I've talked to every person who was part of those meetings that the goal of, that ch of this ch uh, the church, uh, when they founded it, was to develop people who followed Jesus and who saw lives being transformed. And so that was the cru crux of what is the foundation of what they were doing. And so there's a lot of purpose in there. And the focus on it was not just a corporate thing. That's the idea of as fellowship of faith, that's what we're going to do. But it was also this idea that in our lives, we can serve Jesus Christ personally. And in our lives, not only can the Holy Spirit transform us, but our lives can help transform other people as they come into contact with the good news of Jesus Christ. If you were part of that original group, have I gotten it? even close to right. I'm getting nods, okay? David, sound good? Josh is nodding because, uh, yeah, because Josh, um, when he was, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bust Josh Blevins out a little bit. Um, when he was in junior high and was, when I was leading youth, um, I was talking about this whole process, and he said, well, we were talking about something. He said, well, you know, I founded the church. I'm like, he, he actually, so just for those of you, if you ever get frustrated you don't understand what happened. Josh Blevins is, is at Liberty University. I can, we can find his room, and you can send him the letters because he was the one responsible. That's what he said. But where it came from, the foundational element of this comes from Scripture. We're going to look at Mark 12. Very, very, very famous, very popular verses. Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. Transform lives and serve Jesus Christ. Love God, love other people. These are called the great commandments, the two great commandments. And when they group came together, I know their hearts, that that was the goal. There was other stuff. They wanted a contemporary church in Gallia County. There were other elements that, that were part of that. But when it comes down to it, that's the mission statement. So transforming lives and 
serving Jesus Christ. I think it's, it's great, it's good, it covers both commandments very well. Um, I've told you guys in the past, um, from here, from the stage, that I've always felt like it was a little bit backwards because, you know, the transforming lives came before the serving Jesus Christ. Um, it doesn't matter because they're de- there, but I'm just, that's always been a, just a little thing for me. Not a big deal. But I, it, it seems a little bit backwards, but, but one of the things I've noticed is I've really been studying this, and this is going to tell you guys one thing. I've been thinking about the mission statement of this church way too much. And here's the element. When I use that word, and I'm a word person, language I think matters immensely, when I look at that statement, there's one word in there that, that has, has always bothered me a little bit. Um, it's the word and. Because when we say transforming lives and serving Jesus Christ, that's a conjunction, right? And what does a conjunction do? It combines two things, two separate things together, right? Two separate sentences. If you're doing a list, it's, you know, it it separates two different nouns. And so for me, what I was looking at when I looked at this mission, was I was looking at the mission statement, as good as it is, the thing that, here's what hit me. Um, We sometimes have a tendency to view these two things as mutually exclusive. We try to do them both, but they don't go together. How many of us in here, how many of you in here have tried to serve Jesus Christ Sunday morning, at home, doing personal Bible study, all those types of things, and then then try to do your own your your work, try to transform lives, try to be to do mission work or any of those types of things, or, or give to to needy uh, needy people to give to worthy causes, and they've never met. I'll admit sometimes even um, when we do thing, we've done things here at our church as mission as care focused things. Um, we have done things that it's very easy to be, a, of which it's very easy to be a part without actually being someone who follows Christ. Um, if it's a snack pack thing, you can give the snack pack program and, and not really have any concern other than that you want to help hungry kids. If it's filling up backpacks in the fall uh, when school gets ready to start, you can do that separately from, from serving Jesus Christ. But we all have a tendency sometimes, not all of us, but some of us have a tendency to try to keep those two things. We try to do a really good thing by helping people, and we try to serve Jesus Christ. But that's not what we're called to do. We're called to combine those two. Those things are supposed to, to, to spill over, to carry over. And so that little word and, is, has, has I've struggled with a little bit this week. Um, And it's just, so it's just a matter of just changing this, this one single word. So I decided we're going to change it to something else. And so I was going through the list. Now, there's only, there are only two. So if you're getting really concerned, because there are like, you know, six or seven different conjunctions. I'm not putting all those in there. Um, there are other words that will fit. Well, I'm only going to do two. And the first one I thought about was this. Let's change it to transforming lives or serving Jesus Christ. That's easier, Right? We can pick, right? How many people in our lives, how many of the people in our church or people with whom we've come into contact have felt like that in order for lives to change, they needed to get away from religion completely? I was talking to Amy the other day um, as we were discussing this series, and I was talking about some of her friends who are great people and who are very, very um, altruistic, who are very uh, helpful-minded, but they have decided on some level that in order to change people's lives, you need to get as far away from the existence of God as possible because they've been hurt by church people. They've been hurt by faith. They've been hurt by whatever. Um, I was talking to, to um, someone else this morning or this week who talked about a guy who was, he was a confirmed atheist. Now he's kind of uh, agnostic-ish, but he will tell you very clearly, I, I have no problem with Jesus. But I have a lot of problem with the people who say they serve him. 
Actually, he also says he has a problem with his dad, which is a lot to do with not understanding biblical context. But, but that's the attitude. And so people say, you know what? Even, even people who are atheists will tell you that it's their job to try to make this world as good a place as it can be. And of course, for them, it's because this is it. Others of us love the idea of following Christ. Love it. We follow Jesus. We go We go to Bible studies. We do all these other things. But when it comes to actually seeing life transformation ourselves in our own lives, we get to the place where we've had enough. We get to the place where we've known enough. We don't need extra stuff. We don't need scripture study. We don't need prayer. Um, I don't know exactly how you you serve Jesus Christ and don't do those things, but you feel like you've got it, and so you never get to the point where you realize that in Scripture, when you start talking about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit does nothing to human beings but change them. The entire existence of the Holy Spirit as He, as he comes into the lives of human beings who are fallen is to change the stuff in them. And as a result, to do the things that Christ did as God incarnate. And what Jesus did when he came in contact with everybody was transform them. Even the people who hated him had a transformation because they came in contact with Jesus. It's not an either or. As, this, as we believe here at Fellowship of Faith, and as scripture I think bears out, you can't do one or the other. And honestly, you can't say you are a follower of Christ if you do not believe at your core that lives can change. So the either or, so or doesn't work. I knew or wasn't going to work. It was for the purposes of the sermon, right? I'm not that dumb. I didn't say I wasn't dumb. I just said I'm not that dumb. So the last one I came up with was this. Transforming life. And actually, I'll be honest. I didn't come up with this. Um... Actually, I came up with this one, but it's someone else. Jeff Sisson, as we were in worship design team, we were talking about this, and I was talking about my struggle with this. Um, not because the other vision, the other mission, mission statement's bad. I have T-shirts with the mission statement on it. Okay, I believe it. I believe in it. But just because I like words, and I think believe, I believe language matters. And as we go through this next two months, we're we're going to be looking at our core values, but also the language that we have used to try to understand what it is and so we've decided to change it not necessarily to change it but this is my other I idea transforming lives by serving Jesus Christ oh that was great timing Brett perfect transforming lives by serving Jesus Christ how's that different from and tell me class how is that different from and anybody one thought, and where does life transformation happen? In Jesus. It doesn't happen separate. We're not combining two separate things. The only place the life transformation happens is when someone comes into community and relationship with the Son of God. How many of you guys know, most of us have never thought of it that way. Because we have a great mission statement. But over these next two months, over the rest of this year and the rest of my life, my goal will be that people come into contact with the truth of Jesus Christ so that their lives will be changed forever. It links Jesus inextricably to change. I want you to do something for me right now, and this is this is weird. I don't usually do this. I, I'm not I'm not a big class participation person myself, so I don't usually do this. How many of you in this room have tried to change something in your life independently of Jesus? How many of you succeeded? There are programs. There are groups, there are organizations 
There are so many things in this world that have been developed to help us come out of our brokenness independently of God. If you look at the numbers of people who are successful in some of these programs, the percentages are tiny. The reason that the drug problem seems hopeless in this world, in this country, other than the fact that we're trying to act like no, it no longer exists and we're just trying to legalize it all, but other than, other than that, the reason it doesn't work, the reason it seems so hopeless, the reason violence is rampant and we don't understand it is because we are trying to fix it without the main tool for fixing broken lives. And that is Jesus Christ. I want you to look at something from John 7. This is John 7, just a few verses. On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, If you are thirsty, come to me. If you believe in me, come and drink. For the scripture declare the rivers of living water will flow out from within. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. If you were thirsty, come to me. We use a lot of water references here. You see, our logo is, is the guy stepping out of the boat. And the other logo we've been using is the person walking along the water. There's a lot of water references, a lot of the uh, idea of placing our faith in God so God does amazing things. But here is what we've got to get down to before we go into the rest of this two months, before we talk about any other thing. The water we need to be worried about is the fountain that flows from the person of Jesus Christ. He's the one who changes the lives. We can't do anything without him. I've tried as a teacher to work with kids in a, in a community, in a, in a school district, in school districts, in, in just a, an educational system that doesn't want you talking about God. And I've tried to do that kind of thing. And it didn't work. But the life change I saw with kids was when we started talking, we started getting real. When they started asking me things about who Jesus was. When they started asking me things about what Scripture meant. And I could, I could point them in the direction of something bigger than me or bigger than anything else or bigger than their problems. It was Jesus. Come to me, believe in me. That's what Jesus said. Because Jesus also knew he was the only solution to the problem. And so as we're going through this, I want you to think about this idea. Because part of this, it, it's, it's going to be the whole process of this idea, this bottom line. From time to time, we've got to review, we've got to revise our way of thinking. And the first thing we've got to, rev we've got to revise, some of us, maybe not all of us, because some of you, already understand this better than, than I ever will, is that it's not a let's do this cool stuff and ministry and try to, to you know, show people in the community that we care, and let's also maybe eventually, hopefully, they'll come to the church and enjoy the church and, and lives will be changed, but that we understand, first of all, our lives need to be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, and, and the message of Jesus Christ, and that we take it into the community, not because it's a cool program, not because it's something we should do as good people, but because we are compelled by Jesus Christ to do it. That's where you say amen. So I've got a couple questions for you this morning, and this is, this is where we're going we're, we're to finish up. Wow, I talk fast. Which mission statement describes your life? You've been trying to do them both independently of each other? You know, I think about John F. Kennedy when he was, um, and you can have whatever opinion you want of John F. Kennedy. I have my own. But I remember one of the main things, I remember, I don't remember, I wasn't born. But I've read, That when he was running for president, people were very concerned about the fact that he was going to be the first Catholic president. And he made a very clear statement time after time in his, in his campaign, and it was this. 
my Catholicism will never impact the decisions I make. That was how he tried to make people feel better. Me being Catholic has nothing to do with me being a politician or anything else in my life, apparently. He thought he could do both. That's great to want to do both. I believe you should follow Jesus. That's why I'm here. I believe you should serve Jesus. That's important. I believe lives should be transformed. But have you been spending all of your time trying to keep both plates spinning? When if you would just focus maybe on on allowing God, Jesus, to really change your life, to really work through you, that he will show you the places where you can interact with people and you can help them change their lives. It's frustrating trying to do it this way. It's, it's, it's hard trying to do it this way. I mean, I can't imagine how hard it would be as experiencing the, the change of God in the life that God is doing, when God is doing amazing things in your life and not being able to share it. Trying to figure out ways that you can kind of avoid it, but still trying to help people as much as possible. I envy people who are in counseling who have to do that. Amy has to do that in such situa- situations because she's state licensed. She, I'll talk to her, and I've talked to other people in here who have dealt with um, social work and counseling and things like that, and they'll tell you very clearly, it is a very difficult thing to do. But the moment someone opens the door that you can talk about Jesus, the entire situation changes. The rest of us need to develop that attitude. So are you standing as an and? Are you trying to do separates? Are you trying to do either or? Maybe you're in here this morning and you don't know Jesus. You came because someone else asked you to come. You came because, um, for whatever reason, it's not Mother's Day or Father's Day or a holiday. So maybe you just got, you thought you would like to sit someplace cool after the fair. I don't know. And so you've been trying your whole life, and, you, and you're a good person, and you're trying to figure out how to, to help people. And you're, you're the kind of person, if someone needs you, they can call you, and you'll be there. And that's exhausting. And you've thought, well, I'm, I can be that good person, and I can, if I'm just a good person, it'll ha- matter. And you've, trying to, you've avoided this whole idea of Jesus. I'll tell you this morning. But not only is it good to be a good person, not only is that something to shoot for, but God wants to change your life. There's a man named Jesus who came to this planet and lived a perfect life. He died for the sins of humanity. Romans says, that's all of us. Not one person is not in need of, of the salvation of Jesus Christ. So you're here this morning and you've tried the first part and you think you're good. I'm telling you, you need the second part. Or maybe you've been a follower of Christ and you've done that. Or or maybe you grew up in church and you know all the good answers and you know what the Bible says about stuff and and all that stuff. And so you're trying really, really hard to serve Jesus, but you've never understood the idea of transformation. You know, even those of us who are good Christian folk need kicked in the butt by the Holy Spirit every once in a while. It's very easy to get complacent and decide that we know all we need to know. So I encourage you to be open to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to continue to change you. But also, um, sometimes it's just it's easy. Are you are you sitting back and you you're doing all that stuff? You're doing all the right Christian things. Uh, you sing the worship songs up here, you come on Sunday, you tithe, you do all those other things, but you're not really interested in seeing the lives of other people change. Or does the mission statement number three just, that's exactly it. 
I've talked to, I talked to a guy this week, um, had lunch with him this week, and, and he finally grasped transforming lives by serving Jesus Christ. He finally gets it because he tried to do both things separately for a very long time and wound up frustrated and wound up hurting people and, and, and just, just setting fire to so many things. But God has changed him because he, has, he understands. Let Jesus change you. And he will show you where you need to be. And, and the man is in a place I've never, I've known him for years. He's in a place I've never seen him before as far as where he is in his reliance on God. So where are you? And what is important, what do you need to do? Last question. What do you need to do to revise your personal mission statement? What do you need to do, if anything, to allow God to change the tiny little word and the message of your heart? Pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for for everything, God. I just, I am, I'm way more just wired than I usually am after a sermon. I'm not even exactly sure why, but I, part of it is this, God. I know you want to change us. Part of this is, is I, I just, I know that you have awesome things in store. I've said it over and over again probably to the point that there are people in this room who are nauseated when I say that God wants to do amazing things. But the truth is, you do. The truth is that regardless of who we are or where we are in our lives, that you can change us if we will just give our control over to you. That's the way it is with us as people. It's the way it is with us as in families, in communities. It's the way it is as a church. I pray, Lord, that we will continue to transform lives by serving you. I pray, that, Lord, if there are people in here who have been trying to do either or, or they've tried to keep the both separate, the, the both situations separate, Lord, that you will help them find a way to combine them this morning. Help them realize that it's not, uh, they're not two things independent of each other. that it all is grounded and founded in you. God, we love you so much. I pray if there's someone here who needs who needs to needs help, they need they need to talk, they need to pray that they will either come uh, forward or they will come to the back corner, Lord, and I will be standing back there. God, I, I pray that this Sunday will be the beginning of a new way of looking at our entire lives and the entire ministry of Fellowship of Faith. We love you, God. We thank you for every person who's here, and I pray that that, that, that the Holy Spirit, about whom we spoke in, in John 7, and, and, and so much that pervaded the sermon message so much today, the Holy Spirit will speak to the hearts and minds of every person in this room. We ask all these things in your name.
drink from the cup in your head lay back against you and breathe feel your heart beat this love is so deep it's more than i can stand i'm melting your peace it's overwhelming stand with us As we leave here today, I pray that we just, we are seeking you. As Jimmy was speaking, it seems like such a small thing, the, an and, an or, or by. We know we cannot expect to do your will and reach the around us in our community for you. If we're not first seeking you in our own lives. So for those people who maybe today couldn't, didn't feel right coming forward to pray, I just pray you just, just speak to their hearts. Just be with them this week. One last time. I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand, lay back. 
Have a wonderful week.